Welcome to Research Backed Ways to Get and Stay Healthy When It Feels Like You Have No Time to Spend on It. My name is Adrian Nolan Smith. And for those of you who are not very familiar with me or Wellbe, I am a board certified patient advocate. I'm a health researcher, total integrative, functional, holistic medicine junkie as far as um, I just cannot get enough of this information. Um, Welby was born simply out of frustration with my own situation. I'd had, me and my family had experienced a couple of um, not great healthcare experiences in the conventional healthcare system and some really positive experiences with integrative and functional medicine that led me to, which I have, I think happens to a lot of people, want to share with you everything that I had learned to help you avoid the things that I'd gone through and put you on a much healthier path, um, hopefully without having to do too much to achieve that. Um, and certainly before any health issues really cause a massive disruption or tragedy in your life. So that's why I have interviewed so many experts in this space, as well as um, filmed and shared the stories of health recovery, real stories, which I'm so proud of and love. Um, and that's also why I put together the Wellbe Spark Health Program, which I'll be sharing a little bit about today, since it really has a lot to do with the research that I've collected. Um, the program is eight modules that basically cover these 10 foundations that I have combed through all the research to find. So I'll mention it here or there, but you should get a lot of value out of the um, tra free training, whether you're interested in the program or not. Um, and we will definitely have time for questions at the end. So um, definitely uh, think of some as we're going. If you have any that you wanna just keep track of throughout, Put them in the chat and I'll answer all the questions in the chat at the end. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I forgot to, of course, change the date. It's February 14th. Um, I also did this webinar on Sunday because some people, you know, have trouble joining on the weekends and prefer the week and vice versa. So if you were planning to join Sunday and you couldn't join till today, great, welcome, glad to have you. All right, so a brief outline of everything that we're going to be talking about. Um, first, again, I love to explain where these pieces of research come from, where my thoughts come from, who, what's, who and what is informing them. Um, so I'll walk through that quickly. Then I'll explain the 10 foundations of health that I've discovered, which again, health to me means feeling good, living a long time, and avoiding health issues along the way. Um, then I give you quick steps as I go through each 10 about how you can do all of these without much time. And then um, lastly, I know people in the WellBe audience are either trying to figure out um, some chronic health symptoms or issues or have in the past gotten some kind of a diagnosis. Not everybody. In fact, I'd say I have more people who are just trying to optimize their health. But I always like to make sure to address you know, where do you start figuring out health issues um, if, if you're, you know, really dealing with something? Because I know that that's um, very frustrating and it's hard to figure out where to start. And then as I mentioned, lastly, I'll be answering questions that show up in the chat. Here we go. So the first thing is I take my research today from a couple of different sources. The first is the Blue Zones research, which if you don't know about it, it's so fascinating. I've read all the books. Um, the five hotspots in the world for longevity, where they have little to no chronic illness at all. Um, so they've, you know, researched and and discovered what it is, the similarities between these five hotspots as far as lifestyle that make this possible. Then I took research from the Radical Remission Project by Dr. Kelly Turner. Again, so fascinating about covering a couple thousand people who had radically put their cancer into remission with, without conventional Western treatment to try to understand what about their lifestyle choices, choices help them to heal. Um, then I have interviewed dozens and dozens, probably about 50 or so uh, well-be experts at this point, many of which are functional and integrative MDs. And this free training has researched from these experts specifically, but there are many more, as well as uh, my health recovery stories from different diagnoses like PCOS, Crohn's, um, several autoimmune conditions, lupus, Hashimoto's, MS, and other mental health issues as well, like bipolar, Lyme, celiac, um, cancer. So that's more anecdotal, but I like to include that because I think that kind of proof is pretty incredible as well. 
Then um, when I get into some of the non-toxic product stuff, um, I have my, my system for vetting non-toxic products. And um, for the Wellbe Spark Health Program, we actually compiled over 500 non-toxic products in a list for the people going through the program. Again, it, it um, registration closes in a week. So um, then we'll be able to deliver this to all the program participants then. But essentially there are six databases that I like to use. And I took products that score well in at least two of those databases across probably over two dozen categories, like all the personal care stuff, home cleaning, um, you know, safe mattresses, like you name it. We've, you know, fem feminine hygiene products, like all of those. Um, and those compiled um, make up these well-be approved lists. So you sure, I'm sure some of you have heard of Environmental Working Group. Um, Think Dirty, that's more on the makeup side, and then Made Safe is across all categories, the Good Guide, Green Guard, and the Global Organic Textile Standard, that's more for things like sheets, mattresses, and all that. All right, so let's hop right into the 10 foundations of health. Again, this is feeling good, living a long time, and avoiding health issues, which is my definition of health. So the first thing, as I'm sure you're not surprised, is eating nourishing food and avoiding inflammatory food. So in the last decade or two, the Microbiome Project has really helped us to understand that a lot of what we thought about health as far as diet is completely wrong and upended. And it's not so much about just you know, fat is bad or salt is bad, or, you know, there's um, really, it's more about the makeup of your gut and how your gut is receiving and digesting the foods that you eat. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but a big part of gut health, again, is inflammation as well as what feeds good bacteria. Hence why I said, it's really about eating nourishing foods and avoiding inflammatory foods rather than just like eat exactly this diet and, you know, you'll be fine. Um, next is using herbs and supplements. So what we've discovered through certainly the Blue Zones, but also through the Radical Remission Project and many of the experts I've interviewed um, are that, you know, replacing a lot of common drugstore items with um, plant-based um, healing herbs, as well as taking supplements for nutritional deficiencies is a huge part of both feeling good living a long time and then um, avoiding or reversing health issues, uh, chronic health issues that is. Number three is decreasing your exposure to toxins. So that's in indoor air, outdoor air, heavy metals, um, clean water, so getting the toxins out of your water, um, your personal care products, anything you put on your skin, um, and then non-organic food as well. So we'll get into that in a second. But number four is enough and good sleep. So again, have the emphasis on the good sleep part of this because everybody seems to know or most people realize that sleep is important. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's not just about the amount, but rather the quality. So we'll get into that uh, soon as well. Number five is enough and good, I'm sorry, enough and clean water. So again, the real emphasis here is on the clean water, you might be drinking what you think is a lot of water, but if it's full of pharmaceuticals and hormones and pesticides and agricultural runoff, then it could be causing your body a great deal of harm. So we'll get into both of those things as well. Number six is regular movement and exercise. I really stress the regular movement because most of the recent research that I've seen says that continuous movement throughout the day is actually more important for health than if you're sedentary all day and then you go do a gym workout. So we'll talk about that too. Um, number seven is a healthy gut, which gives you a strong immune system and control of viruses, parasites, and bad bacteria in your body. So hugely important, and we will get into that as well. Um, number eight is vice control. So this is, I'm including coffee here. I'm sorry if anybody is upset by that, but it's really important to understand if you do drink alcohol and coffee, the kind you're drinking, and also to have strategies around how much you're drinking, because people I think don't quite realize how much both sugar and caffeine is a drug. So I'll say, and drugs, they are taking kind of all day that's dysregulating other systems in their body. So we'll get into that too. Number nine is connection and support. So 
research is showing unbelievable things about the power of human connection and feeling supported as far as people being able to fully reverse chronic illnesses, which is pretty awesome. So anything where somebody can reverse a chronic illness by doing it, you better believe that doing it will prevent any chronic health issues in the future. So we'll get into that. And lastly, emotional and mental peace. So things like stress management tools, meditation, self-care, release of trauma, fostering positive thoughts, um, and therefore also trying to reduce negative thoughts, uh, self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others, expressing and practicing gratitude, um, defining your purpose, having spirituality, and then also connecting to and following your intuition. So these things were all, um, we'll get into exactly how powerful they are, but they are extremely powerful, which is why I left them last. And their research is fascinating that shows it. Okay, so diet. Um, there's a, we could have, 10 webinars on diet, so I will just briefly say these few things. There is no one diet for everyone. Don't believe anybody who dogmatically tells you that you need to follow this exact protocol and you know not to deviate and that they have all the answers, eat this, not that. The reason is because we all have extremely different microbiomes. There are trillions of microbes in our guts and they're all different from the person next to us, even within our own families. And so what you eat and what your gut likes as far as foods that it both does well with and also can't tolerate, it really more is about the bugs inside you than it is about the food. So that's why I say there's no one diet for everyone. However, there are certain foods and we looked at all six of the most popular diets right now. So vegan, paleo, Mediterranean, ketogenic, um, you know, a whole, uh, all of them, I can't think of the last year at the moment, um, that showed all the correlations between those six and then put them in here for you. So six things to get out of your diet right away are added sugar, fake sweeteners, fried food, ultra processed foods, and refined carbohydrates. So I guess that's actually five. Um, this is all of these diets remove these foods. So it's not up to your gut microbiome, whether or not they, you're, you know, they, they are well tolerated. They are not well tolerated by any humans. So you can go ahead and get rid of them. Um, very hard to do so, I know, which is why in the Wellbe Spark Health program, we actually, our detox or kitchen module, we go through together and get rid of added sugar in your fridge, your pantry, all of your food items that have a nutrition label, any fake sweeteners you have, um, you know, fried foods, you, most people I feel like eat out more, but that's just something to be conscious of when you are eating out. Um, and then we'll really get into what processed foods are and make sure that you get processed foods out of your kitchen as well. Um, and refined carbohydrates, I'm sure a lot of you already know that, you know, things like cookies, cakes, bagels, donuts, you know, those are all refined carbs and um, spike your blood sugar and just do a whole host of different inflammatory things in your body. So we avoid those. Um, the quick steps that you can do, as I mentioned, you know, before, if, if you want to join the Spark Health program before it even starts or whatever, is to go through and actually throw out um, foods with these five things from your fridge, pantry, and freezer. Um, some of the stuff that's technically processed is very hard to realize. So peanut butters often have added sugar. Um, frozen dinners and any microwavable meals are ultra processed, so you want those to go first. Deli meat is, is processed and also crackers have added sugar. Salad dressings have a lot of processed ingredients, um, meaning not salad dressings that you might make yourself. So anything really, if you wanna have broad strokes that has more than say five or six ingredients, especially if you don't understand what the words are um, on a nutrition label, those should really go because those are considered processed foods. Um, and then with all six of these popular diets today have in common is that you replace all those items if you have them with organic, whole foods, fresh alternatives, Try not to have anything with nutrition labels if you can, or if you do, then they have less than, let's say, six or so ingredients, all of which you understand. You know, something like a couple store-bought hummuses that I buy will just have, you know, tahini, olive oil, salt, pepper. So 
I feel comfortable with that. But when it gets into a lot of words that seem mysterious, um, if they are mysterious, it means they don't really exist in nature. And then that is very inflammatory in your body because once, once those ingredients get in there, your body doesn't know what to do with them because they don't exist in nature. So they start wreaking havoc. Number two is using herbs and supplements. So in the last couple of years, we've learned that over-the-counter products like pain meds, you know, Advil, um, acid reflux meds, like Zantac or um, even Neosporin, which is antibacterial cream, steroid type creams or allergy meds, they all might squash symptoms in the short term, but they actually have long-term side effects on your body So, um, and do long-term damage. So I have gone through the process, which again, as I mentioned, we'll do in the Spark Health program in our medicine module of going through our bathrooms and getting rid of all that kind of stuff. There's a few things I'll explain how that you can keep like hydrogen peroxide and rubbing alcohol and stuff, but we go through, get rid of those things and then understand how to replenish that with um, both herbs and just, you know, plant-based um, remedies that you know you might use if you have a cold or get a cut or bruise, et cetera. So you can kind of have things for when things go wrong, but that aren't causing long-term damage. Um, supplements. Supplements are a very, very hot topic, very tricky. Um, you know, technically we shouldn't need supplements, but the problem is um, the American diet, even the you know, healthier than average American diet lacks um, the nutrients we need for our organs and the systems in our body to function properly. And that's not even just function optimally. Um, so many of us do need supplements to make up these nutritional deficiencies, or we need to do a crazy huge diet overhaul, which, you know, if you're planning to do that, awesome. If you're not, then you may need to figure out if you have some nutritional deficiencies and add in some high quality supplements. Now I say high quality, again, this is something that I have vetted for the Spark Health program, but there's a huge difference in quality um, as far as, I think I mentioned this, yeah, supplements and herbs are not regulated by the FDA because they're considered food rather than drugs. Um, and so you really need to understand what's like a store store grade and what's really high quality, something that like a, a holistic doctor could order for you because how much you absorb and how much is actually in each pill and if it's tight, if it's packed too tightly or if they add a lot of weird um, additives and things like that, all of that is important. So you wanna make sure you're getting really high quality brands. Um, so again, quick steps, throw those things out, get, plant-based um, natural alternatives for common ailments like cuts, bruises, and colds, um, and then figure out if you need supplements, and you sadly likely do, and therefore um, which ones and which brands are really high quality, because you don't want to overwhelm, the you don't want to take too many supplements, because you then you, you give up eventually and want to take none, which is not the goal. Okay, next is decrease toxins in your environment. So um, a couple of things on this. You can't control what's outside in the air, unfortunately. The only thing you can really do is try not to live close to a major highway. You also can get a good water filter. So drinking filter and shower filter, both are important. You can make sure your indoor air is not full of pollutants like mold or um, arsenic, lead, chemical filled dust, pesticides, etc. cetera. Um, you also can get toxins in household and personal care products out of your home. Um, so all of these things is what you can do to, what you can and can't do to decrease toxins in your environment. I am all about controlling what you can control. And we actually go through this in the home detox and air pollution module of the Spark Health program. We go through all the things in your home that are known to contribute to indoor air pollution. Um, and then we don't worry about the things that are outside because when you worry about things out of your control, you can sort of drive yourself crazy. Um, so quick steps that you can do, as I mentioned, are throwing out um, home cleaning and then also skin and beauty products that aren't marketed um, as safe and eco-friendly. And then even the ones that are marketed as clean or safe, you wanna take at least two different databases to check your products um, and see if you just wanna use one that's better than nothing, but sometimes the scores are different and so you just wanna feel really confident that this is the cleanest stuff you could be using. Um, 
EWG app is called Healthy Living, and then there's also the Think Dirty app, or the other four databases I mentioned, I think, um, up in here. Yeah, Made Safe, The Good Guide, Green Guard, yeah. Um, the very, and then the next thing to do is you can use the Environmental Working Group's tap water database to put in your zip code and figure out the contaminants that are actually in your water system because the, there's different contaminants in every water system, which is pretty wild. So the same water filter that might be good for LA water doesn't do any or isn't good enough for New York water because it's different things, um, especially if you live in more agricultural area versus a city center. Um, and then the last thing, and we actually go through this in our detox your home module and make sure that you're getting the right water filter for your zip code, but also your home and your budget, i.e. if you have a rental, you probably aren't doing a plumbed in water filter, but you can definitely get the best picture that's out there. Or, you know, if you have a higher budget, then you would want to do something that's actually plumbed in under your sink versus just the picture, et cetera. The last thing you can do, which is really fast and easy, is open your windows often. Um, water, um, air inside tends to have about five times as much pollutants in it as outdoor air, simply because it's concentrated. Um, the reason for that is things come in. They blow in, they bring, you bring them in on, on your shoes when you come into the home, they come in on products, et cetera. But then outside, because there's wind, it breaks up the particles of, of pollutants, whereas inside it just kind of hovers and sticks. So opening your windows, even if you live in a polluted city, um, that is a great thing to do. But the one caveat, as I mentioned, is if you live on a major highway, I wouldn't do that because th that is quite a huge concentration of outdoor air pollution. Okay, the next thing is get good quality and enough sleep. So sleep is how our body's systems and organs repair so they can fun function properly when we're awake to flush out toxins, to digest and extract nutrients from our food, and also to build up immunity. So nobody, no adult humans need less than seven hours of sleep, despite what anybody might tell you. So um, we all need between seven and nine hours. Some people need nine, some people need eight, some people need seven. The best way to figure that out, um, and I think this is what, in one of my quick steps, um, anyway, I'll finish this, is to, um, you know, not set an alarm for a few days on a vacation and, and also not drink on those days either because that will affect your sleep or mess with caffeine or whatever. But if you can just sleep and see when you wake up naturally, if it's, you know, I'd say at least three nights just so that you can take an average. But if all of those nights you sleep for exactly eight hours, then that's your cycle. And that's really what you should be trying to get every single night. Um, the next thing is poor quality sleep is mostly the result of things that you're doing during the day, which I think is very empowering. So you can do something about it. Um, it's if you drink too much caffeine or too late in the day, you don't drink enough water. Um, if you drink too much alcohol or alcohol too late in the day, if you don't move enough, um, if you have too much stress, obviously stressful thoughts can keep you up and wake you up. It's awful. I've been there. Um, blue light exposure from TVs and phones late in the evening um, or just too much all day, actually, even. And then also your bedroom environment. So if the temperature is too hot, that disrupts sleep. If the if there's light, um, you know, lights from alarms, things like that, or even just lights coming in from your window, um, that disrupts sleep the wrong, you know, an uncomfortable mattress that can uh, disrupt your sleep. And then also sound. So if you um, are, you know, in a noisy place or even just a noisy part of your building and, and then obviously gonna disrupt your sleep. So a few quick steps, set an alarm on your phone right now to start getting ready for bed 60 to 90 minutes before you do lights out. So, and then also you wanna ensure that lights out is at least seven and a half hours before you need to get up. So for me, I know that my natural sleep cycle is more than seven hours. So it's at least eight. So I know that if I you know, need to be up by seven, then I need to kind of try to set um, lights out. I, I say around 1045 to make sure that, um, you know, I have time to fall asleep. And therefore I set an alarm at 915 to start the process and to start anything left, I need to maybe check on my phone quickly. I do, and then I try to put it away, um, turn the TV off, dim the lights if you can to facilitate your natural circadian rhythm. Um, 
and just, you know, do, go through the process and have time so it's not rushed. Um, then I would say stop drinking caffeine after 1 p.m. or even earlier if you can. Um, this is a caffeine stays in your system for actually quite a bit of time. So this is a huge sleep disruptor that I'm not sure if everybody realizes. Um, and caffeine is in coffee, obviously, but it's also in uh, black tea, matcha, any kind of soda. Um, but then also in dark chocolate. So if you're eating a lot of dark chocolate at night, that could be keeping you up. So now I love dark chocolate, but I try to only have it, um, you know, right after lunch, if I'm going to have it at all. Um, if you drink alcohol, shift it earlier in the night. Be, and of course, limit the amount. We all want to do that. I know it's easier said than done, but stopping a few hours before you go to bed and then drinking plenty of water, to try to, you know, flush out your, your organs a bit. Um, does help. So a lot of why alcohol disrupts sleep is that your liver and your other organs are working so hard overnight to try to, you know, get this toxin out and break it down. And so that's what it, why, is why you feel, you know, so groggy the next day. Um, so if you give your body a couple more hours to break down that alcohol and also, you know, don't um, drink too quickly and or too much, then it shouldn't disrupt your sleep as much or maybe even at all, which is the goal. Um, buy and use blue light blocking glasses. So I'm not wearing mine right now because it's not quite late enough in the day, but usually about three o'clock and afterward, um, I'm wearing them and, you know, at my computer with my phone, et cetera. Mine are less than $20. This is something you can do really quickly and easily. One of the Wellbe, uh, Spark Health Program partners. So we have partnerships with over 20 well be approved brands um, where we have special discounts for our program participants. One of them is Felix Gray, which is a blue light blocking glasses company. So you get a discount and can buy some there. Um, and then remove all lights from your bedroom. If you have an alarm with a red you know, light or you have a lot of things charging that have a light in your room, you wanna get all of that out of your actual bedroom. Um, any night lights, hall lights, all of that, you wanna have it you know, pitch black. Um, Drinking enough clean water is the next one. So we would die, we won't die very quickly without food, but we would die quickly without alcohol. <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke. Uh, we won't die quickly without food, but we would die very quickly without water. So it's critical for blood pressure function um, and blood flow to all your organs. And your organs function best when they're fully hydrated. So of course you would want your organs to be functioning at their best, right? So you want to be fully hydrated. Um, the Mayo Clinic actually, and I've looked at a lot of different sources of information on this, the Mayo Clinic recommends 91 ounces a day, which is over 11 eight ounce cups for women and 125 ounces a day for men. I think this seems a little bit high. Other sources that I like say to drink half your body weight in ounces, which is usually what I stick to. Um, but it's also important to remember that being at altitude or flying um, or drinking alcohol or caffeine or exercising or in the winter when the heat is blasting or even in the summer when you're sweating more, all of these things are dehydrating and require more water than the minimum. So perhaps the Mayo Clinic's recommendations are taking into a fact that, you know, there's a lot of different things making you dehydrated. So you want to, you know, air on the side of more water. Um, but one of the quick steps that I do, and I think is easiest, is getting a big glass or metal water bottle. Again, you don't want to use plastic. Uh, that you know, increases the toxins in your, in your life. Um, and you want to have, you, you want to know the ounces. So I like to use like a liter bottle, it's 32 ounces. And then that way it's really easy for you to just fill that whole thing up. And then you can drink like two or three of those um, each day, depending on your weight, but you know, like, okay, I just want to make sure that I get through all of this throughout the day. Um, and that can be at work, at home, something you take with you. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is the reason that the water is not clean and why a water filter is so important is that in the United States, our, our water system plants and our water treatment plants um, are, were built a long time ago. And the infrastructure is old and aging, meaning that it's not able to filter out all of the pharmaceuticals and hormones from birth control pills and other things in the urine, um, as well as super bugs that are able to overcome a lot of the chemicals we put in our water to kill them. And so, 
these things, because they're being created so quickly, you know, new drugs are coming out every day. Um, and so many women are in birth control that a lot of us are drinking this stuff in, in tap water. Um, and so filtering for that reason is so important. Also because a lot of the chemicals that they use um, kill bad bacteria, viruses, and parasites, which is great, but also it kills your good bacteria, um, both in your mouth and in your, in your gut when it filters down. And that really messes up your gut health. So you really want to make sure you have the right filter. Next is regularly moving and exercising. So this should come as no surprise. It's a big eye roll. But what I think is interesting is recent research shows that, you know, the, the, the effect of excessive sitting is actually more harmful than they thought. So in 2016, the American Heart Association warned that based on new research, exercise doesn't seem to undo the negative health effect of excessive sitting. So meaning, if you're somebody that sits at a desk all day, but then makes your way to the gym, that's obviously awesome, keep that up, but it may not be undoing the negative health effects of being so sedentary all the time because as human beings, we were always meant to be moving all the time. Um, also, you can see the people in four out of the five blue zones around the world, they don't go to the gym at all. They just move continuously throughout the day. They walk up hills and stairs, they do housework, they carry heavy things. That's really, um, they go on long walks, that's, that's how they get their movement. Um, also, something that you can do is getting up at least every 45 minutes, but ideally every 30 minutes or less, is shown in the research to reduce your premature death risk. So I say set a 30 to 45 minute alarm, whatever is more realistic for you, for each time you sit down and just put it on. And obviously it's a little annoying, I realize, but over time, maybe it takes a week or two or three, you'll be able to actually you know, it becomes more of a habit and you'll be able to just realize when you've been sitting longer than you should be. Also drinking a lot of water not only helps with hydration, but then you'll have to get up more often to go to the bathroom. Okay, then um, climb up as many stairs as you can, skip the escalator or the elevator. Um, also skip the car as much as possible. Always leave time to walk and bike to appointments as much as possible. I realized the US was set up in a way so that most people have to drive everywhere, which stinks, but anything you can do to skip the car, do. Um, carry and lift heavy things. Um, obviously within reason, don't hurt your back, but if you can carry and lift you know, boxes and groceries and stuff instead of putting them in your car, that's great. That's exercise without having to go anywhere to do exercise. Um, the last thing you can do, which goes back to our hunter gatherer time, is to sprint up some stairs or down the block a few times a week. So if you can't run at all, maybe you can do this in a swimming, um, in a swimming pool or you know, you can bike uh, and sprint biking if you can't run, but this should take 30 seconds and it stimulates what we call outrunning a tiger. And so the idea is when we were, you know, back in our ancestral days, we really didn't run except away from animals that were trying to kill us. Um, so again, this is the outrunning a tiger, but it's really good for us to need to, to sprint once in a while because in our body, that's how it actually um, perceives, you know, danger and gets adrenaline up and then to stop. So I will say, unfortunately, you know, running really long marathons is sort of unnatural for human bodies. Um, but using hills and carrying things and walking and getting up throughout the day and then doing these intermittent little like 30 second sprints are just, you know, should be everything that you really need, which is great. Um, have a healthy gut, strong immune system, and control of viruses, parasites, and bad bacteria. Okay, this is the next foundation. So we talk so much about gut health at Wellbe, um, and there is a whole module of the Wellbe Spark Health Program dedicated to gut health and improving and optimizing it. And the reason for that is that the recent research shows that it controls really everything. So 70% of your immune system resides in your gut. Um, meaning that if you don't have a healthy gut, you're probably going to get sick a lot and have a lot of colds and you don't have a good protection system against infections. 
Um, also, your gut bacteria controls your digestion, your hormone imbalance. So if any kind of fertility or you know, uh, reproductive type issues or, or menstrual issues, um, that's gut related, thyroid function, um, brain function, mental illness and mood, um, or just mental health and mood, as well as your ability to heal. So if something does happen to you, how quickly does your body actually heal it? All of that is controlled by the trillions of microbes within your gut. So it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, to break it down very quickly, good bacteria is your protector, bad bacteria is your enemy. Um, so if your good to bad gut bacteria ratio is out of whack, or if you have a certain virus or parasite that's active, or your gut wall, so the, the lining of your, you know, intestines is permeable, meaning rotten food and feces and whatever is leaking out, then every system in your body is likely out of whack. So all the ones that I mentioned, your hormonal system, your thyroid function, your digestive system, all of that, um, which can often result in lots of different kinds of symptoms, not just like gut and digestion related symptoms. So depression, anxiety, as I mentioned, thyroid issues, all of that. Quick steps that you can do right now for your gut health is to buy and use an oral irrigator. So, you know, like a water pick for after your teeth brushing, because a lot of your mouth microbiome influences your gut microbiome and vice versa. So keeping, you know, that, keeping the bad bacteria out of your mouth, um, certainly at night when you sleep, and also making sure that you keep the good bacteria in your mouth is super important. Another part um, that I mentioned is throwing out over-the-counter medicines. Those really can impact the gut poorly. Um, and so again, I go through that in the WellBe Spark Health Program medicine module. We do that together and figure out the best replacements for you. Um, buying and eating fermented foods, very important. Um, things like kimchi I love now, sauerkraut, and a few others. Again, we do this in the, the Detox Your Kitchen module. So we figure out as well as the gut health module, which fermented foods you actually like. And also if you're not familiar with all of them, you can buy a few and try them out um, and making sure that they just get into your regular diet um, often. So, you know, at least several times a week. Uh, throwing out foods with added sugar from your kitchen. At sugar, especially added sugar, is kind of deadly to the gut because um, it feeds bad bacteria. So um, that's a big one we will work on together if you go through the program. Um, then avoiding antibacterial things like non-organic meat and dairy, and then certain antibacterial wipes, soaps, hand sanitizers, and then of course, antibiotic medica uh, medication as much as you can. So this is a huge topic. Um, the non-organic meat and dairy is because they will give antibiotics in the feed to um, animals not not raised organically as well as the dairy that they get from them which you then eat when you eat the the meat and then also if you drink or eat the dairy then you're getting it that way as well um, the issue which i think is so hard for people to really conceptualize is when you totally kill off bad bacteria that you're also killing off good bacteria and you're actually wiping out your protection so you we all were taught that germs are bad and you want to kill off bad bacteria, but it's been a huge kind of 180 for me to see that actually, no, we have to, um, of course, you know, something like if there's like poop on your floor, you want to get something really good to clean that up. But for most everything else, um, just simple non-toxic soap is really all you need. And then of course, eating organic meat and organic dairy. Um, and then, you know, not using hand sanitizer, just washing your hands with soap, or if you're on the go, using an alcohol-based one instead of um, antibacterial and avoiding antibiotic med medication, unless it's, you know, a life-threatening thing. Um, and even then making sure that you have the right probiotic when you're going through that and you're only taking absolutely what you need to and all of that. So this is all super important, but it has a huge impact on every system in your body. Okay, next is controlling the vices and amount of your vices. So if you don't drink coffee or alcohol, great. You might have people in your life that do and you can help them out with this. We have a whole 
module dedication dedicated in the Wellby Spark Health program to vices like coffee and alcohol, but also to hydration. We combine those. Um, the reason for that being that coffee and grapes are two of the most pesticide ridden crops on earth. And one, because of course, grapes are very sugary, so they're very fungal. Um, but if you're drinking non-organic coffee, you're drinking just a huge amount of condensed pesticides. And especially in the US and other you know, countries in the world, they use a lot of um, Roundup or glyphosate on these crops. So you're drinking a lot of um, you know, glyphosate, concentrated Roundup, that it's not good. Um, so it's very important to switch to uh, cleaner brands of both of those things. And also to make sure that you know the places around you, whether that's a wine shop or a restaurant you want to frequent um, that has organic wine options or organic coffee options if you like to do things out once in a while. So we go through all of that in the in the Vices module to make sure that you know specifically um, the brands that you want and the places that you want around you. I think I mentioned before, like, you know, not having caffeine after 1 p.m., drinking, if you do drink alcohol, doing it earlier in the night so that it's not so disruptive to your sleep. And of course, drinking less helps. Um, and of course, drinking more water when you are drinking alcohol helps to um, decrease, you know, the, the, the rate that you drink that alcohol. So, um, all right, the next one is connect and get support. I think this is the second to last one and then I will have a bit of time for questions. So recent research, which is so interesting and especially the Radical Remission Project by Kelly Turner shows that when people feel um, a real connection to others and that they have support from others, they can really reverse very serious chronic health issues, life-threatening chronic diseases and health issues, which is pretty incredible. Um, there's a lot of research showing that it reduces your risk of premature death, even if you don't have anything going on, just to really connect to other people and feel that other people, you know, when you're having a horrible day, are really there for you and support you and love you unconditionally. Um, now, it doesn't mean having to add a lot of time consuming activities with others, like planning a lot of dinner dates or, you know, whatever. It just means that when you are spending time with others, um, that it's high quality not just watching TV next to somebody or everybody being on their devices or just working um, and that you are actually not spending too much time alone. You know, a lot of us need alone time or feel like we're introverts or whatever, but the, unfortunately the research shows that human beings need to be around other human beings. So, you know, you might feel that, you know, your particular group of friends or family isn't that supportive or you're not connecting that well, that's fine. As long as you connect with anybody or somebody and feel supported by somebody or anybody. Um, quick steps you can do if you go to workout classes, make a standing date to go with a friend or group of friends. Um, if you do a morning or evening walk, make sure someone's coming with you to have a standing date to do it. If you work from home, consider being at a co-working space or coffee shop a few hours each day or a few days a week just to be around others. Even though you're not connecting, it's weird. Just simply being around others helps. Um, try a no device policy at dinner with family to cultivate more meaningful connection and conversation. Uh, you can make a list of friends or people that you love, put it in the notes app on your phone or whatever, and put a daily or weekly reminder to call or FaceTime at least one of them. Um, even if you're walking or driving somewhere, just to catch up, just to tell somebody you miss them, you love them, you're thinking about them, and just to kind of, if you've been going through a lot, share some of that. It, it helps a lot. And then lastly, you've heard of date night, but putting some kind of weekly date night with your partner on your calendar and sticking to it is important. And again, getting the devices out of, out of the way. Lastly, having emotional and mental peace. So the nine other foundations mean nothing if it's a toxic environment inside your head. So uh, quick steps that you can do for that. Um, and this is really supported again by the Radical Remission Project as well as the Blue Zones research. Um, releasing suppressed emotions. So if you can forgive others and yourself for things and let go of a lot of the negative feelings that you have or negative things that you're saying to yourself, this is hugely powerful for not only reversing chronic health issues, but preventing them altogether. Um, praying, if you have spirituality in your life, you can pray to anybody, but just some words of prayer um, daily or weekly is also highly correlated to um, reversing or preventing chronic health issues. 
um, playing music often, first of all, it all, all of these things also just um, enrich your life. So there's an added bonus there too. But if you can play music often when you're showering or changing or cooking or exercising, driving, working, you, it doesn't take any added time. It's you're doing all these activities anyway, but when you put music on, music is so powerful and healing um, for the human body. Also choosing comedy instead of drama. I think these days with you know, a lot of the television series um, and movies, they're very dark and kind of thrillers and disturbing and um, we need laughter. Um, and so choosing a comedy instead is something quick that you can do even tonight. Um, nature is hugely, hugely important. So going for a walk in a park or just anywhere you can see open ocean or a mountain or green, um, is incredibly healing to the body and incredibly powerful for prevention rather than always being on concrete or in a gym. I think we spend 87% of our time, the average um, human being today, or at least American, indoors. And then I think another 6% of our day um, in our cars. So that leaves about 7% total outside at all. And that's probably mostly in the summer. Um, so both for vitamin D and for your emotional and mental peace, get outside into nature as much as you can. Um, I mentioned this before, but reducing negative self-talk by identifying it and reframing what you're saying to be positive or compassionate with yourself or others, hugely impactful and something you could try as soon as we get off this webinar. Um, also being able to say your life purpose in a few sentences to anyone was highly correlated amongst the various blue zones. Um, all, all of them seem to be able to do this very easily. So that's something that, you know, might take a little bit more time and introspection, but it's important to do. So maybe you can do it, you know, in your journal when you're falling asleep tonight, um, and really memorize it, like feel, feel like you could say it to anyone. Again, your gut intuition. So really feeling like you're connected to your core. Um, and I guess people also call that your soul um, is very connected to those who avoid chronic health issues and reverse them. So when you can actually feel what your intuition is saying and then being able to follow it, that's very powerful. And then we we could talk about meditation for six hours, but um, it's there's so much research being done today about the power of meditation to reset your nervous system. Um, even a five minute meditation every day can can have benefits. So the only thing is that that is important is trying to do it pretty consistently. So if you can just commit to the five minutes but try to do it every day, that's better than being really into it and doing 20 minutes a day for a couple of weeks and then giving it up for six months. Um, focusing on your breath. Your breath, you're gonna be breathing all day long anyway, so it shouldn't add any extra time, but focusing and slowing down your breath has so many health benefits, um, not only for emotional and mental peace, but it takes attention in your brain away from negative thoughts, it reduces anxiety and stress, blood pressure, insomnia, and then it also slows your heart rate. So it has numerous benefits and it couldn't be easier. Um, you know, people that, I think there's like a, a Buddha saying, like, if you have control of your breath, you have control of your life. Like being able to slow that down and take that in, it, it relaxes your shoulders, your diaphragm, your stomach, everything drops. And it also makes you just take a moment to think, I am pretty stressed right now, or like I'm totally disconnected from my intuition, or I have been talking pretty negatively to myself all day. Like let's, let's rein that in. So your breath is powerful. Last thing I want to touch on before we go to questions is if you're trying to solve any chronic health issues or symptoms. So um, I have a, a few, you know, about three places where you can start very quickly trying to figure those out. And a lot of people think they don't even have chronic health issues at all. Um, and then they just kind of explain to me that they, you know, deal with symptoms of, you know, they get a lot of colds or sinus infections, or um, they have smelly gas, or they're often constipated, or, um, you know, just a number of things, or they have depression. Um, and they don't think of themselves as having any, um, you know, health issues. And I'm, sort of amazed by that. But a lot of us do today because um, the modern world is unfortunately pretty toxic. Um, now the modern conventional healthcare system and the reason that um, I focus so much more on 
a holistic approach is that it really only focuses on symptom squashing and disease management with the primary tools being radiation, surgery, and pharmaceutical drugs. And so these things are absolutely incredible and life-saving in the case of emergencies. And so, you know, when they first kind of discovered um, antibiotics in the 1930s, it was like, you know, world changing. Um, the problem is they decided to take those tools and then apply them to all these modern chronic health issues that we're experiencing. Um, and the problem is they don't quite work for that. They don't really heal the problem or enable your body to heal itself. They often just squash the symptom, which comes out in some other way. And then often the side effect of whatever surgery or drug that was can be just as bad as the original problem, just in a different way. Um, and so where I say to start, and again, for the Wellbe Spark Health Program, you can actually do a healthcare add-on where you would have two consult calls with me wearing my board certified patient advocate hat, where we go through the process of trying to figure out what's going on with you, what have you already done and tried, and let me figure out through my database of over, I think it's about 800 or 900 um, functional and integrative medicine practitioners and doctors all over the country and the world, who might be best for you to see, and then also figure out, you know, if they have availability, can you afford them, et cetera. Um, and also just try to figure out some basic stuff that you can do yourself, which is right here. So um, first thing is symptoms are a cry for help. So I always try to have people start here. They're trying to tell you something. So do not squash them or try to shut them up. Use them instead as information. Um, and start trying to keep track of what you did or used or ate right before you felt a particular symptom. And it can even be a little bit of congestion. Um, it can be itchy eyes. Like symptoms can be very subtle, like a scratchy, um, you know, kind of skin rash. Um, obviously, gut, gut symptoms are more obvious, like if you have constipation or you have pain in your stomach or you... Um, you know, throw up or have diarrhea, like that's more obvious. But there's all these other very subtle cries for help that are symptoms that you can pay attention to. And you can start keeping track, again, your notes app on your phone or in a notebook and try to track what is going on so that you can see, oh, well, I think that I'm reacting poorly to gluten or to um, this, you know, uh, skin foundation that I'm using on my skin and I should probably figure out a less toxic version of it or whatever it is. Um, you can also even do a food product or home environment elimination diet. So you can literally leave your apartment if you think you might have mold and that's giving you symptoms um, or take things out of your diet and then put them back in slowly. Um, this usually takes three or four weeks. And then you can get more definitive answers about what might be not agreeing with you and causing you these symptoms. Lastly, as I mentioned, if you're gonna see a medical professional, I would always advise that you see somebody with whole body training so that they can connect the systems in your body because everything is connected. Um, and so symptom squashing, it doesn't get anybody better and actually causes a lot of harm in, in the long run. Um, and so a functional or integrative naturopathic type doctor will run more comprehensive testing um, and can access more natural immune supporting treatments that enable your body to heal itself, which is key for chronic health issues. And it's what your body wants to do anyway, it wants to work really well for you. It's just about making sure that whatever's causing, whatever's in the way of that, you remove. So get these foundations down, um, then think about any of the latest wellness trends if you want. These 10 foundations are way more important than any of that stuff. Um, no amount of matcha or coconut milk will undo the effects of bad sleep or if you pop a lot of Advil or sitting all the time, like these are the things that you can work on right now um, and will have really lasting implications for your whole life. If you're dealing with these chronic health issues, as I mentioned, um, you know, check out the program, see if the, the option with the consult with me is helpful to you. If not, try to, you know, find somebody, as I mentioned, that has these qualifications. Um, you can start right now with a lot of these 10 foundations or even by taking our program. And again, registration closes in a week um, because often what happens is these doctors give you a plan that involves these 10 foundations so you can get started right now and maybe even feel better before you need to go spend a lot of money on a doctor like that. That being said, they can do comprehensive testing. So 
um, you know, if you want to see something like that, totally understand. I see doctors um, like that as well. Lastly, if it feels impossible to set these 10 foundations up in your life, consider that you already spend a lot of time doing other things like buying groceries, you know, buying things at the drugstore, personal care products. So think of it more like you're just swapping things out than adding things onto your plate. And if you really feel like your schedule is too crowded, try to take everything out of your calendar and then think about what your life might look like if you started with just one piece of each of these 10 foundations, you know, every week, and then build your life back in from there. And it might be a totally different lifestyle, but you'll feel so amazing. And also you'll be set on a much more healthy path in life without having to spend much money or make, you know, really large changes once you actually had a health issue. Okay, I got through a lot of information. I'm sorry that took the full hour, um, but I will stay on as long as needed for any questions that you guys might have. So ask them in the chat if you can. I'm afraid I might've lost some people by going so long, but let's see. Any questions at all, put them in the chat, that would be great. Kelsey, Lee, Marina, Rachel, Stacy, Virginia. Hi, Virginia. T, Debbie, anybody? Well, somebody just writes something in the chat because now I'm, now I'm not sure anybody can. Um, okay, here we go. Any feelings about estrogen? Okay, so I think you're talking about taking synthetic estrogen, right? Yes, okay. This is tricky. Um, so synthetic estrogen obviously has an impact on your body that is unnatural, right? That's why the birth control pill, I don't believe that it's actually, uh, I feel it's quite harmful um, to the human body. Um, and that's because when things come in that are synthetic, meaning they're not made in, in the world, um, your body starts to have kind of bizarre reactions to it, otherwise known as side effects. Um, and so it's, it's pushing the problem somewhere else. And slowly but surely, these other um, side effects will start to pop up and other greater health issues, I think, happen um, uh, down the line. So I understand that some people need them for, you know, temporarily, um, but if there's a way to take more natural forms of estrogen or to regulate your hormones in a more natural way through food or through other herbs and supplements that help with um, getting rid of estrogen dominance or bringing in more estrogen, things like that, um, that would be that would be better. Anything synthetic is always going to have an un unintended consequence. So there's just something to think about. Um, the website that breaks down your water contamination by zip code is the Environmental Working Group's tap water database. Um, again, we go through that in our program. And I want to answer Virginia's other question, but I also just want to say that I've put together um, this whole presentation, as well as another, I think about 15 quick steps that you could start tomorrow. And the reason being that, of course, I would love to take people through this in our program. And so I'm happy to send that to everybody on this webinar um, tomorrow morning. Um, if you are one of the people that decides to actually sign up and join me for the program tonight. Um, so it's a one day special gift that I'm doing. Um, if you decide and I'll, you know, check out the, it's getwellby.com um, and just click on our program at the top. Um, and you can look at the whole program description and then I'm happy to send all of this information over um, if you are one of the amazing people who will be joining me. I think that would be very exciting. So I hope you will be. Okay, so then um, Virginia's other question is melatonin, melatonin harmful or okay? Um, melatonin exists in nature, so that's great. Um, melatonin is in certain foods um, and it's a natural supplement. Um, of course, I, I don't, Think that we should rely on anything you know if you're if you're never really able to sleep properly without taking melatonin and there's something else going on you're doing something throughout your day or there's something internal going on that's preventing good sleep from happening because we should all be able to sleep 
well um, every night. Um, that being said, if you're going through a particularly stressful time or you have um, just gone, you know, traveled and have jet lag or something like that is going on, or you just know you had a coffee way too late in the day and it's going to like mess your sleep up. Um, then yeah, melatonin here or there is, is fine to take. Um, I, I, it's a supplement. So it's just, um, increasing the amount of melatonin that your body has in it in order to induce sleep. Um, again, I wouldn't rely on it because, you know, I always like to understand the root cause. If you have sleep issues, chronically, you want to understand, you want to heal them. You want to have good sleep on your own, not, not rely on uh, a supplement. Okay. These are great questions. Um, any other questions? Kate, Amanda, Debbie, Kelsey, Rachel, Stacy, Virginia, Lana, anybody else? Oh, Amanda, thank you so much. Yeah, I'll take any comments if you want. They can be questions or just, you know, if you found it valuable or helpful or whatever you wanted to say. Um, I appreciate that. Virginia, thank you so much. Glad you agreed. It was great. Okay, anybody else? I know I got through a lot of information, I'm sorry, but it's just, I have so much content from our program, which kicks off next week and trying to condense it all into kind of like one slide on each of the modules. It was just a lot, but hopefully it was, it was helpful. Yes. Oh, thank you, Stacy. You're so welcome. Okay, great. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. Okay, so you guys can, you know, I'll wait for anybody else to type a question if you have any more, but you can expect um, an email from me about the, um, the free guide that I made with all this information and some additional quick steps that you can start. Um, oh, great, Lee, I live in Texas and because of your recommendation, I open all my windows, wonderful. So we're starting already with improving our indoor air quality and our chronic health risk. Perfect. Um, so yeah, you'll expect an email from me, I think within the next half an hour or so. So look out for it. Um, talking about uh, this free guide that I made and being able to send it to you and with some information about our program. Um, we're very, very excited to get started and registration is only open for one more week. So we're, we're very all hands on deck right now, getting all the content and wellness concierge support ready for that. Um, any other questions about the program in particular or anything? I'm happy to um, stay on and answer. Nina, hello. Uh, Kelsey, Amanda. All right, I think we're near close to the end here. Oh, hi, Nina, sister of Virginia. That's awesome, glad you're joining. <laughs> um, so I'll mention very quickly that um, the, all the modules that we, or the, the 10 foundations, no, no, that's totally fine. Um, late is fine. Um, so the, the 10 foundations that we went through today um, are in the eight modules of our program. And we go through them in one hour live webinars like this, but rather than it being just a ton of information, um, we actually go through and take the actions within the hour because I'm all about just getting them done and over with rather than having them be something that is just on your to-do list endlessly. So that's a big part of um, my goal for you. But then obviously they're also recorded and you'll get the replays next morning to go through them on your own if you couldn't make the webinar. Um, and then um, we will also have what's our, 
called our wellness concierge um, service available. So any questions you might have about things you're doing in your life during these eight weeks, you can ask and we will get back our health coaches and other people that we've hired to help will be able to actually research information and get back to you quickly and easily um, based on everything we've collected for the program research. Um, just so that you can take action really in these two months rather than um, just learning a lot and then not implementing it. Because that is, I am all about in 2020, helping people actually take action to implement things rather than just learn about them. Um, although I'm always happy to, to teach. Uh, so that's, that's some of the details. Um, there's the just the webinars and uh, concierge component of the program. And then, as I mentioned, there's this healthcare chronic health issue add on um, where you can have console calls with me as well. Um, if you're trying to troubleshoot something and you're like, I just want to get, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant or I just want to get rid of this acid reflux or um, I don't get my period or, you know, constipated, whatever this is, we can try to figure out together what might be going on and steer you in the right direction, whether that's just to the right books and research and things you can try on your own or to an actual functional and integrative um, medicine practitioner or doctor, or all of that. Okay. Anything else? Oh, and then just like there's a lot of fabulous people on this webinar, our program is an amazing group that together will be able to, you know, is like-minded and will be able to support one another in the journey of making these changes, um, especially if sometimes it doesn't feel like family or friends are that in tune with it or that supportive of the changes. Um, okay, another question from Lee. Any great ways to keep your liver healthy? Oh, the liver is such a hot topic. Um, the liver does all the hard work of detoxification for your whole body. Um, it also processes not only things like alcohol and caffeine and uh, dirty food and all that and environmental toxins, but also hormones. You know, if your body is not um, releasing estrogen or processing estrogen properly through your liver, it's gonna cause a whole other set of health issues within your body. Um, some people say the best liver detox is avoidance. So if you can get toxins out of your home and off your body and your personal care products and out of your air, and then also take it easy on vices like caffeine and alcohol, um, that's a great place to start as far as reducing what your liver has to do. Um, and then also there's just some great liver supporting foods. So um, green, you know, really, really deep green leafy vegetables are fabulous for your liver. Um, that's why you, you know, see things like, you know, kale and Swiss chard and stuff um, in like liver juices and stuff. Um, so I just say cook those vegetables, eat them with, you know, reckless abandon. <laughs> um, those you can't, you know, get enough of um, dark leafy greens. Um, and then there's some other great herbs out there, um, high quality herbs. Again, you wanna make sure you're getting vetted herbs um, for liver support and helping liver to, to function properly. Um, healthy fats are very, very helpful for liver support. So yes, it's a mixture of avoidance. So you know, not taxing your liver too much, but then also there's certain herbs and healthy fats and foods that help it to function better. Does that? Uh, answer the question within a small amount of time. <laughs> okay, so we have a few people still on. Um, anybody else? Okay, you're welcome, Lee. Great. Okay, so expect an email from me in a couple of minutes. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. I know you all have busy days. When you commit to taking time to improve your health and learn about how you can do that, um, you really commit to yourself in so many other ways. So I really commend you for that. Um, and I hope that you know I get to see some of you in my program and get to know you a, li a little bit better. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Thank you for joining.